Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Just like with the acute leukemias, there are two general types of chronic leukemias based on the type of neoplastic progenitor cell that's present, myeloid or lymphoid. Unlike acute leukemias, however, chronic leukemias involve an abnormal proliferation of mature or maturing cells rather than blasts or promyelocytes. Yeah, our last sketch covered acute leukemias, and it was cute and all, but it's time for some serious art. Take this piece in the center here, huh? What do you think? Okay, interesting opinion, though misguided. It's clear to me that the aura of the purity line spatially undermines the exploration of montage elements. Though with regard to the issue of content, the internal dynamic of the negative space er, threatens to penetrate the... Oh, wait. That's just a clock. Anyways, compared to the acute leukemias, chronic leukemias may present with a more insidious onset and may be asymptomatic at diagnosis. And in the center of this sketch, we've included our recurring symbol for chronic disease, an old grandfather clock. As indicated by the signs above, we're going to cover chronic myeloid leukemia in the modern myeloid area on the left, followed by chronic lymphocytic leukemia over in the late lymphocytic hall to the right. Chronic myeloid or myelogenous leukemia, abbreviated CML, is a myeloproliferative neoplasm caused by the unregulated clonal proliferation of mature and maturing granulocytes. At Sketchy, we depict granulocytes as blue, white, and pink dots symbolizing basophils, neutrophils, and eosinophils respectively. Kinda like the Bende dots in this painting here. Neutrophils are usually the most dominant. And unlike the acute leukemia sketch, which featured crude, amateurish splotches of paint representing immature cell types, this sketch features nice, neat, round dots, conveying an image of mature, differentiated cell types characteristic of chronic leukemia. It should be noted that these cells may be morphologically normal, i.e. they have a normal appearance in terms of shape, structure, form, and size, but are cytochemically and functionally abnormal. CML progresses through three disease phases, chronic, accelerated, and blast. Most patients are diagnosed during the chronic phase, during which disease is more insidious and often asymptomatic. Untreated chronic phase CML progresses to an accelerated phase in three to five years. The accelerated phase is characterized by progressively impaired neutrophil differentiation and refractory leukocytosis. Not to sound mean or anything, but the left side of that painting is looking a little uh, rushed. Accelerated, if you will. And as a result, the basophil, neutrophil, and eosinophil dots are more splotchy and less differentiated. Slow down there, buddy. And finally, the blast phase resembles acute leukemia and is characterized by an uncontrolled proliferation of myeloid or lymphoid blasts, symbolized here by these amateurish crude splotches of paint. Just immature, to say the least. Chronic myeloid leukemia accounts for 15% of leukemias in adults with a median age of 65 at diagnosis. However, CML does occur in all age groups. Let's talk about clinical presentation. As I just mentioned, CML is usually diagnosed in the chronic phase. Many patients are asymptomatic and diagnosed incidentally based on routine laboratory testing. Just look at this Lichtenstein fan over here giving the thumbs up, happy and symptom free. Her husband though, not so much. Nonspecific symptoms of CML include fatigue, malaise, weakness, drenching night sweats, and weight loss. These symptoms are typically more insidious in the chronic phase of CML, but become more severe in advanced phase disease. CML typically involves splenomegaly due to extramedullary hematopoiesis, hence the large splenic guitar in the painting back there. If the enlarged spleen compresses the stomach, patients may experience early satiety and weight loss. Patients will often describe feeling full prematurely despite having a good appetite. Splenomegaly can also cause abdominal fullness and distension. Patients may report left upper quadrant pain or discomfort, sometimes referred to the left shoulder, as a result of the enlarged spleen. In some cases, splenomegaly may even cause splenic infarct because of insufficient blood supply to the overwhelmingly enlarged spleen. 
inflammation of the splenic capsule, aka perisplenitis, can also occur. Patients with CML may describe bleeding, including epistaxis, bleeding gums, and, as highlighted by the spots on the bench here, petechiae. This is thought to be secondary to platelet dysfunction, which is kind of counterintuitive considering that these patients often have thrombocytosis, or too many platelets. Alas, though they are plentiful, these platelets are not functioning normally. Kind of the theme here with CML. Patients in the accelerated and blast phases of CML begin to present with symptoms more similar to acute leukemia. I knew I recognized that guy. Yeah, I see him all the time over at Cute Luke Ceramics, the setting of our acute leukemia sketch. Symptoms of acute leukemia are primarily a result of cytopenias. Fatigue from anemia, bleeding and petechiae from thrombocytopenia, as well as infections and fever from neutropenia. Patients may also have bone pain as leukemic cells expand into the bone and periosteum. Exposure to ionizing radiation, like an atomic bomb or nuclear reactor explosion, is the only known risk factor for CML. So, moral of the story here? Stay away from explosions.